I was uh, getting my truck unloaded. I was, I'm a truck driver. And uh, these guys were unloading this 40 foot long rebar and were pulling it off the back of the trailer and they caught a pallet and threw it up there on the side of the truck and landed on my leg, my foot. I ended up going to the hospital and uh, standing there for 11 days and in severe pain. I mean, un, unbelievable pain. I, I, I didn't realize how bad the pain was when something was dying from not getting blood flow. And uh, eventually, five weeks later, they had to cut my leg off. Um, scary. Um, very distraught. Um, I just didn't know what I was going to do. And from the time I pulled, they pulled my boot off, and I seen I didn't have no foot. Um, that was the first thing. What am I going to do now? And um, it's that haunted me through the whole time I was in the hospital, and after I got my leg amputated. Um, and it still haunted me just by what I went through with this, this lawsuit, uh, through the whole thing, not knowing, you know, just not knowing what's going to happen. Uh, you know, cause them people, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but it was, it was terrible. Uh, well, Rodney, I remember when we first came to your house Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you were in a pretty low place. Bills yes. piling up, oh. <laughs> uh, and uh, I, we saw you just didn't know what you were going to do. And um, I remember at that point, we really didn't know right. what we were going to find on that case. And I think we told you that, but um, man, we met Rodney and we just knew we had somebody that we had to fight for and that this guy had been seriously hurt uh, and he was in a bad place. But the one thing I could tell when I met you, Rodney, is that you were a fighter and you were gonna see it through to the end. And, uh, and that was important for us in taking on this case because we knew we had somebody that was in a position that they were gonna to have to, uh, to go with us all the way to the end on this. Uh, well, first thing that comes to my mind is frustrating because it was like it just every day, it was just bringing up memories or, of what I've already went through time, day after day after day after day. And it was always just uh, uh, disheartening, I guess. I guess that's what you'd call it, because like I say, I didn't know how this case was going to turn out. I mean, I know how it should have turned out, but you just never know. You never know, especially when, you know, them defendants, boy, they, they beat you up, man. So I just didn't, you know, I just didn't know how it was going to turn out. One of the things that um, we had to fight through in this case was the blame the victim strategy by the defendants, where one of the things the company is doing is to try to dig up everything they can from your past, things that you've served time for, dealt with, right. put your life straight. And at a point in time when somebody like this is really trying to do everything right, uh, the negligence of somebody else turned your whole world upside down. Yes, sir. And one of the hardest things that kept us going through the case was seeing how hard Rodney was willing to fight at the same time that the defendant's whole defense was to say, it was your fault for losing your leg. You were right. standing too close to the truck. You have whatever thing in your past that has nothing to do with this case, but we're gonna try to blame you for it and make it, you look like right, the bad guy. Right. And uh, that's the sort of thing that just offends me. And yeah. it was something that really motivated us in fighting this case because when a defendant spends so much time blaming a victim for a harm the defendant has caused, what that tells us is this is going to happen again to somebody else mm -hmm. if they're not made to pay for the full amount of the harm they caused exactly. to you. Yes. How do you feel now? Oh, I'm happy as a lark. <laughs> what, what are you going to do next? <laughs> Or what have you done so far? Buying a, buying me a big house that I've always dreamed of on some land out in the country, and um, and started buying some rental houses for my portfolio, um, and that's probably what I'm going to be doing is just 
buying rent houses and and being a landlord. <laughs> how does your future, when you wake up in the morning now, how does your future feel to you in terms of your opportunities compared to where you felt a year ago, two oh, years ago? Astronomically, I mean, there's no, I mean, now there's more security and, uh, um, and I just, I just know that everything's going to be okay. A year ago, I didn't know. A year ago, I woke up every day with depressed pretty much. You better screen your attorneys. I mean, you better make sure your attorney is on your side and that you can trust them 100%. Because if I would have, see, that's why I didn't turn this case, get this case going right off the bat by hiring uh, them other attorneys because I don't trust them. I didn't trust them. And uh, I happened to run in through y'all somehow, and uh, that was the best thing that ever happened. <laughs> I mean, I trusted y'all from the time y'all come down there. I knew y'all was gonna do a good job, and y'all did. Astronomically good job. It's been an honor, man. Yeah, it's been great. <laughs>